Hey, I'm Anya, also known as Mepity, and today I'll be showing you five ways to add texture to your digital art. And to demonstrate it, I've drawn an incredibly self-indulgent mini-me. As my subscribers may know, I love subtle texture in art. I find it great for several reasons. To me, it can provide a sort of homey, handmade feel, along with warm, cozy colours. It can also add depth and visual intrigue. There's more for you to look at without distracting from the core artwork. Perhaps most importantly though, I believe it helps digital art look less, well, <laughs> digital. This is more of a personal preference thing, I suppose, but completely flat colours, perfect gradients and smooth lines can look a little clinical and soulless, so adding texture makes it feel that bit more tactile and human, if that makes any sense. Like, in real life, very few things are completely smooth. Things like fabric, skin, wood and so forth is textured, and even though you don't have to replicate this texture exactly, adding something can really separate beginner artists from amateurs and professionals. After all, texture is usually one of the final stages of the art making process, and it does tend to get neglected quite a lot of the time. So. That being said, some styles do really work with that flat look, so this isn't a be-all and end-all, but um, <laughs> anyway, I'm rambling, so without further ado, here's a few techniques you can use to add texture to art. Use funky brushes for line art and shading. I think a frequently overlooked aspect of art is how the line art and shading can affect the look and feel of a piece. I have an entire video about line art linked below, so I won't go into detail here, but basically, explore all the different brushes your software has to offer. I use Procreate, and I've recently been really enjoying messing around with some of the new brushes they have in Procreate 5. In this drawing in particular, I tried Mercury, which has some really unusual properties regarding opacity. This also applies to shading. Um, so, you know, rather than having something smooth, if you add this bit of texture, it really gives you something to grasp, if that makes sense. I, I really don't know how to explain it, but there's just something different compared to smooth lines, smooth shading, and textured lines and textured shading. Yeah, because like having perfectly clean and smooth shadows has its place, but I encourage you to try more gritty, sinewy, pixelated, fluffy brushes rather than, say, an airbrush. This can make gradients a little more stark, which can actually often look better than washed out, hardly noticeable smooth shadows. For this technique, all you need is to pick a brush you like the texture of. You can also use screen tone brushes if you have them. I don't, so I'm not showing that, but anyway, my go-to is Nico Rel, as usual, and all I do is select the silhouette of the drawing and create a new layer with that mask. Sometimes to make that selection, I get rid of the background and do copy all, or I duplicate all of my layers and merge the duplicates into one. Then I'll do a couple quick passes over the image with this brush in that new layer. It doesn't matter all too much which colour you pick, but I tend to go for what's most prevalent already. So with my art, that's usually oranges, reds, pinks, yellows. For this layer, play around with what blending mode it is. If you're going for lightening or contrasting blending modes, such as add or soft light, then I suggest picking a darker colour. If you pick a darkening blending mode, like Color Burn, then I suggest something lighter. The saturation and opacity of this layer is completely up to you, so, but basically, the stronger the opacity, the more prevalent the texture is. Okay, so this next technique is one of my favourites and it's super easy. I actually recommend combining this with any of the other options in this video for some extra oomph. So you start by creating a new layer, which again can be any blending mode, but for this I tend to use overlay and soft light. 
You then fill the whole thing with one color. If you're on Procreate, you then go to the magic wand menu and click on Noise. I turn this option all the way to the maximum, and what this does is make each pixel slightly varied from its original color. You can stop here, but I tend to find the pixels a little too small and not noticeable, so I select the whole layer again and I make it bigger, therefore making the pixels bigger too. If you find the pixel edge is too harsh though, you can then add a touch of Gaussian blur and bam, there you go. <laughs> it's so easy, like texture in what, 10 seconds? Alternatively, once you're done with your piece, you can run it through a photo editing software and there's often a bunch of similar options that achieve a similar effect. Now, a little more work is required for this technique, but I find it really worth it. It's pretty much the same as the previous two options, but instead of one flat color, you insert an image. What you can do is go online and look up things like paper texture or wood texture, and you'll get a bunch of really nice pictures. You can actually get super creative, like in the past, I've used rust, meat, hair, mashed potato, and so on. Depending on what you choose, this technique can be just as subtle or as brazen as you like. I really like that paper cutout collage look, and it can really work. Like, if you think of Charlie and Lola or this piece that I did nearly two years ago now. Aside from finding images online, if you want to fine tune things and be more unique, I really suggest making your own textures. So I grabbed a bunch of random paper and stuff that was lying around in my room and scanned it through. I also used some pages from these texture packs I bought a couple years ago. You can even make your own textures with paint, charcoal, soil and so forth. If you don't have a scanner, a high quality photo and good lighting works equally well. And if you're interested in the textures that I've made and saved, you can download them by becoming a patron. Just to recap, you insert the image, then set the blending mode to whatever looks best and turn the opacity down a little. If you want to get fancy, you can use different textures for different parts of the drawing for more contrast. And now for my final technique, hand drawing your texture. Similar to the first option, this is mainly about picking an interesting brush. I prefer pencil and dry ink type brushes for this, and you basically just scribble all over your art. Normally my scribbles follow the contour of my art, but randomizing it or going in one particular direction can achieve its own vibe. I like to lower the opacity of the brush, so if you go over it multiple times, the tone varies a little and it looks a bit more layered. I suggest starting with a color similar to the rest of the image, but much lighter, and then setting the blending mode to soft light. Once you've done a first pass, I'd then go in a couple more times, but with other colors to just add a little bit of extra pizzazz, I guess you could say. I don't use this technique all too often, but one of its benefits is it can help create a flow in the image. You don't have to do this to the whole thing. In fact, in the past, I've reserved it for just hair and clothing items. And so that way you can make only the parts you want to stand out. Okay, that's all of my techniques for this video. I hope you liked them. Do let me know what you think in the comments down below. What were your favorites? Do you already do any of these? Do you have any other techniques that I didn't include? Oh, and whilst you're down there, don't forget to like the video and subscribe. I make all kinds of art related videos generally once every two weeks. And why not also follow me on Instagram at anya.arts and mepity. Anya Arts is more for polished work, whilst Mepity is more sketches, works in progress, and general goofing around. And how about supporting me on Patreon? 
For $4 a month, you get to watch my videos early. You'll also get exclusive access to some other bits and bobs, including the textures mentioned in my third technique and my CalArts portfolio. You also get unlimited access to audio critiques from me, and people have been finding this especially useful for portfolios and so on. A huge thanks to my current patrons, Suze, Alicia, Nuria, Noah, Melissa, Massey, Gagli, Emily, Corinna, Brisa, B, and a very tiny bee. <laughs> you guys mean an awful lot to me. And thanks so much for you guys for watching. I'll see you around. Bye!